You'll soon see what Gotham City will be like without fear, and it won't be pretty. Fear is the glue that holds society together. It's what makes people suppress their worst impulses. Fear is power, and today it will be quite expensive if you want the antidote. Here's your look at the Batman the Animated Series, figure number 44. This is Scarecrow. Scarecrow is part of the new wave of Batman the Animated Series figures from the folks over at DC Collectibles. He comes with a pair of interchangeable hands, a scythe, and an interchangeable head. Ladies and gentlemen of the mob, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to take the measurements first before we have a look at the figure. Taking the tape measure and putting right to the very top of Scarecrow's hats right there. There we go. You're looking at a figure that's 6.6 6 inches in height, which in centimeters works out to be 16.8 centimeters tall. A big thank you to the folks over at DC Collectibles who were nice enough to send these my way. Here's some scale comparisons, my friends. There you go. That's what Scarecrow looks like next to Hardak Batman, a figure of which we've already had a look at in the previous review. Hardak Batman is a little bit larger, a little bit bigger than Scarecrow. As you could probably guess it, you would want Scarecrow to be a little bit more lanky and skinny by comparison, and thank goodness he is versus Hardak Batman on the left. Further looking to your left, you also see a whole bunch of accessories that come included with the figure. One thing you won't see, though, is a display stand. DC Collectibles seems to have now omitted the idea of using these display stands, and though I will say Scarecrow has a smaller footprint, a little skinnier of a build, he still seem, seems to stand perfectly fine. I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything by the fact that he simply doesn't come included with a display stand. What he does, however, come included with, though, is a scythe, a really nice, cool-looking scythe. Here, as you can see, is done in black, or in brown plastic, I should say, and the top part, the bladed part, has some really neat little serrated edges to it, and it's been painted here in a gray, a very flat gray. I'm glad that they don't add any additional paint to this. Adding additional paint would sort of detract away from this looking like it was taken from the cartoon, which, looking at Scarecrow before we get kind of get delving deeper into the figure, you really can certainly see that he looks like he was taken right out of the cartoon. So he does come with the scythe. I will talk about that in a second. He also comes with a pair of interchangeable hands. We'll talk about that in a second. We're talking about a lot of things in a second. And also, for the other accessory, he comes included with the head of Dr. Jonathan Crane. A nice little, again, bonus addition, all the more warranting the idea of maybe picking up a second one of these scarecrows so that you can depict the figure without the mask on. And then you can have Crane's head underneath. We'll talk about that in a second as well. What I do want to talk about, though, is uh, the figure, like I said, does come with some interchangeable hands. What he does come with is one gripping hand, and he also comes with a relaxed hand. The other options that he comes in available with is a secondary, a matching mirrored pair to the other hand that he had a look at. It's kind of, again, like a claw hand or a slightly relaxed hand. The other thing he comes included with as well is a closed fist. Now, the only problem with that, though, is if you want to get the scythe in his hand, we'll go ahead and do that right now, the scythe only technically fits on one side. Um, I wish they had actually given you a hand like this, a gripping hand that could have gone on this side of his side of his torso. Ultimately, it does mean that when you are displaying the figure with his scythe, there really isn't anything gripping the scythe in place. Instead, kind of my workaround to that is simply just dropping the uh, the handle section onto the relaxed hand and kind of just holding it like this. I kind of, again, wish he could have come included with another gripping hand to go on this side because, again, the only other option that he has for... Well, he doesn't technically have anything else for that side, if you think about it. He's got the relaxed hand on that side of his torso. Oh, I guess he does technically have the closed fist, but the closed fist isn't going to serve much purpose. So really, like, this is the only way that you can hold the scythe in his hand. And because there is nothing really gripping the handle either, the scythe, the bladed part of it, sort of just drapes down and sits loose. 
So that's a bit of, that's a bit disappointing, I have to admit. We'll put the scythe right to the side. We'll get the figure all straightened up here. And uh, let's show you let's show you what the interchangeable head looks like. Not likely going to be what's going to stay on the figure for the time being, but for the purpose of this review, I'm going to go ahead and take the head off the ball joint. It's a very actually thin necked ball joint, and that's going to just attach over top of his neck, just like so. There we go. And that's what it looks like with Crane's head in place. Again, a contrast once again. That's what it looked like with the mast head. This is what it looks like without the mast head. Up to this point, we've gotten ourselves a new Batman Adventure Scarecrow, a terrifying portrayal of the Scarecrow. And then we've gotten ourselves the second interpretation of, of Scarecrow from the Batman animated series. Uh, this particular head sculpt also, like I said, does make a second appearance. The first appearance of Scarecrow doesn't actually have the hair at all, and it looks a little bit more like a simplified Scarecrow. Perhaps down the road, DC Collectibles may entertain the idea of giving us that Scarecrow as well, so that we have all three incarnations and the different looks for the character. So again, like not a bad looking head sculpt for Jonathan Crane. If anything, I would be entertaining the idea of, like I said, picking up a secondary one of these simply because then I can go ahead and have one displayed with the head sculpt and one displayed with the mask. We're going to go ahead and take the head off as my preferred look, as I've already discussed, is this head sculpt right here. Plop that into place. As you can see, the ball joints and the heads are quite easy to swap out. As for the figure itself, there's not a whole lot that changes from this look of Scarecrow to his first and his first appearance of Scarecrow in the Batman the Animated Series. Um, I do really like this look, personally speaking, of the two original looks, but uh, really fell in love with the new Batman Adventure Scarecrow, one of my all-time favorite designs of these characters from the new Batman lineup. Uh, for his face sculpt, as you can see, he's got a little bit of the visible teeth kind of peeking its way through, giving you a slightly underbite on his sculpt. As you can probably see it, though, hopefully you can see it, that the jaw is actually not just molded out and painted. There is what seems to be a visible gap in there. I don't know if you can see it or not. There it is right there. There's a visible gap between the bottom jaw and the top jaw. They actually did sculpt a gap. I think that's pretty clever. The face is utilizing really only one color. It's kind of like this very light caramel, kind of caramel brown. The long hairs of straw stick out from the top of Scarecrow's head, which I might also add the hat is not removable. So in case you are interested, taking the hat off, it's not something that you can do. The hat is also made up of a slightly softer plastic than the rest of the figure. All the figure's dense parts are made of a more a solid plastic versus the hat, which like I said, is a little bit lighter and a little thinner by design. There's what it looks like on the back. You've got really nice little stitch marks that they've not only painted in, but might also add sculpted in there as well. I like the natural fold that the costume has sort of draped itself as it falls down his very skinny, lanky torso. You've got some stitch marks down the sides of his leg as well. And down below, you can also see that the the area around his ankles tied off with ropes, as well as the ropes tied around his waist and around his wrists there. Uh, really, again, looks like he was taken right out of the show. The fact that he doesn't come with a display stand, like I said, doesn't disappoint me all that much because, as you can see, we'll get the figure right there, he stands perfectly fine. Uh, a small enough footprint, but still a footprint large enough that holds the figure upright. And also, for good measure, Lately, it seems like they're now also adding peg holes on the undersides of their feet. A really smart move if you want to display the figure in a little bit more of a creative pose, providing you have a display stand, which this figure sadly doesn't come included with. So let's have a look at this guy's head sculpt, or I should say articulation. We'll start with the head sculpt, which rotates all the way around. And being that it's also ball joint, it can rock back and forth, and it can also hinge up and down. The shoulders hinge out to about there, a little bit about there. Uh, unfortunately, though, the way that the arms are uh, sculpted, they kind of stop at that point, telling you, the collector, not to really move the arms any bit further past that point. The arms, however, do rotate all the way around. Kind of when you are rotating, you'll notice that it rotates out rather than up. Has a bend at the elbow. 
The elbow also allows the forearm to rotate and the hands, the hands rotate all the way around. Uh, he doesn't have an upper torso ball joint necessarily, but he does have a waist swivel. Legs split out, forward and back. Double bend on the knee. I'm loving the fact that they have double hinges on the knees now. And also the feet swivel all the way around. And you have a hinge up and down. Really isn't anything that I would change to this figure from a design standpoint. It looks exactly like it did from the cartoon. Maybe at the very least, if he had also been given the means to hold the scythe in both hands, then this would be a surefire hit. I uh, still love the fact that we get ourselves now the second look for Scarecrow. This is now only now leaving off the very first appearance of Scarecrow that we had from the Batman animated series line. And you never know, maybe DC Collectibles will eventually release a figure based on that down the road. Two-Face, Clayface, and Scarecrow here make up some of my favorite villain designs from the original Batman the Animated Series cartoon run. Up to the point, in fact, that Scarecrow got so, so drastically changed for the new Batman Adventures, one of which a design that I thought was a, an enhancement. Up to that point, this Scarecrow was my all-time favorite look for the character in all the cartoons. I love the long strawed hair that was coming out from the rim of his hat. And I really like the fact that his eyes looked like they were just kind of floating there in these pools of black emptiness. He's a really neat design character and DC Collectibles I think has done true justice to him in this figure. The only thing I would have changed, like I said, is not the fact that he doesn't come with a display stand. I'm fine for the fact that he doesn't come with a stand if he has a peg hole on the underside of his foot, which he does. The only thing I think this figure could have afforded in having was an extra hand that could have allowed him to grip the scythe. In final looks, I've got him actually just gripping the scythe with one hand, but I would love to be able to grip the scythe with both hands as if Scarecrow's swinging it. The fact that he also has a peg hole on the underside of his feet means that he can at least get in a pose in which he's going to be swinging the scythe, providing, of course, he had had the hand to do that and he wouldn't have toppled over. Short of, again, the fact that he doesn't have that hand to be able to do that, I'm likely probably just going to be displaying him with what, in the same way as what you're seeing here in Final Looks. Just a great looking figure, and probably, I would say, even my favorite figure from this current wave. Hard Act Batman was pretty cool, I have to admit, but there's something to be said about the Master of Fears, Scarecrow here. I think DC Collectibles have really done a great job on this guy. Today we were having a look, though, at the DC Collectibles Batman the Animated Series. This was figure number 44, and this was Scarecrow. A really neat, neat looking figure. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Batman the Animated Series reviews, I've pretty much done all the figures up to this point, minus, of course, the newer waves. So feel free to go back and have a look at those if you'd like. If you also haven't had a chance to do so yet, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. Keep your eyes peeled, because certainly more videos will be coming your way. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys next time.